Alrighty, welcome back to the Draft Podcast. Uh, this is going to be for RPO Season 7. It's been a long, long time since we did RPO Season 6. Maybe two, over two years? Three years? Um, I can find it. But we are back. Um, just finished up the draft earlier this week. And I'm, we're just going to be going through all the drafts, um, discussing them, strengths, weaknesses. And I've got... Uh, two co-commentators to help me with that. We got Greg, Taylor Frost, hello, and we got Cole. How's it going? Okay, so I think we're just going to go in order of the draft, Um, starting with Toad and Foods. You want to start first, Ben? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, the thing that stands out most about this draft is why is there a Dragapult and a Gengar? It seems like they do very similar things. Um, I will say, though, um, mm -hmm. from my game with them, do I have a normal type? I don't think I do have a normal type. Um, I think even if it seems redundant, um, those are, like, if you don't have a normal type, I think switching into those ghost moves is really hard. Yeah, definitely. Um, he's got good speed, like really good speed actually. Uh, he's got good priority too, so that's all very nice. Um, the ma- I guess the major thing is the wall course just a little bit lackluster overall. Um, I mean it's pretty pretty low tier mons that he that have to take most of the hits on his team, which is just not ideal. Um. He doesn't really have any good reliable recovery. He's got like, like a tongue, and that's about it. I mean, it's definitely a more offensive team, so it's not the worst thing, but it's still a bit of a problem. So Rotom gets pain split, I think, but yeah, that's about it. Yeah, not really reliable recovery. Um, and like rest, rest and lights maybe. I mean, something I noticed is that the Pokemon that you would have to bring rocks on is most likely Metagross. Or else you're bringing Corsola or Palpatode, and I don't think you want to do that. So you kind of know if it's if you want rocks, he's bringing Metagross, and that's going to have rocks. And I don't know if you really want that. Yeah, I was going to say that too. He's only got Stealth Rocks for Hazards, um, and his Rockers are fine. I mean, they're not really that great either, to be honest. Just Metagross. Yeah. Is it just Metagross? Yeah. It's it's Metagross, Palpatode, and Corsola. They all oh. get Stealth Rocks. Yeah, no, but that's pretty bad. You don't pretty really bad. want to bring Corsola or Palpatode. Yeah, that's pretty bad hazard options. Um, and only having Stealth Rocks is pretty bad. I also noticed... So, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, too, um, with Metagross being the only Stealth Rocker, um, it kind of limits his physically offensive options. I mean, I guess Town Flame and Conk are really the only other two. Yeah, I can definitely see that. I mean, even on the special side, he's a little a little bit limited. I mean, just his defensive core in general is uh, lacking. Um, I was going to say he's got a bit of an electric weakness. Uh, I don't think he has any resist. Oh, no. I mean, besides Pop and Pelt. Yeah. But yeah, that's it. So electric's very uh, spam against Paul him. Also resists. Oh, yeah, true. Type that's true. But yeah, I, I would think you'd want to pick up a ground or a grass type, for sure. Um, but otherwise, you know, it, the, the offense is very solid. Very good speed, like I said, good priority. He's got, um, like, wall breakers, can counter. Um, he's even got set up with, like, Snorlax and stuff. Um, yeah, that belly drum set's kind of scary. Yeah. He's got, like, decent pivot options. Rotom Wash, Talon Flame. Um, the Grimstall uh, Snow it. is good utility. That's I guess that's I it. Yeah, because Talonflame right. and Rotom Wash are the only two Pokemon that get like a pivot move. Like Dragon, Dragon, Dragapult gets U-turn. Yeah. yeah. Oh, gets U-turn. Okay. My bad. Yeah. And I will also say Dragapult is just like by far and away the best thing in this draft. It should have been banned, yeah. I think. Um. So just having Dragapult on the team on its own is like makes it a really good team. That thing's I mean, kind of insane. He was picking what first and thirty second. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of missed out on a couple other good things, but I think there was definitely a drop off after the first couple of 10 point Pokemon. Mm-hmm. 
but yeah, uh, I gave this a 7 out of 10. Um, it's solid. I mean, it has its problems. Um, but it doesn't have any major problems, I'd say. Yeah, I think, like you so said, I think he has to run a hyper offense every week. So you can kind of expect the same play style. I was a little bit lower on it. I gave it a 6.5 out of 10. Not too, too much. Just, I think I had more issues. Just I, I really didn't like the Gengar pick after Dragapult. I know that, like, oh, it's two really hard-hitting ghost types, but I still think there are, you know, if you plan for it and you have something with an Assault Vest, you kind of just don't care too much. Especially the po on, like, the poison's good, there. though, for fairies, because they do you know, challenge Dragapult a lot. Yeah, but anyway, we should we should move on. I, I'm thinking 7 out of 10. What do you guys rate this? 6.5. Uh, I'll do, do 7.5 just because he beat me. <laughs> okay. Moving on to DJ and Khan. Does anyone else want to start on this one? Uh, I don't mind going for it. Um, so just the first thing I noticed is doesn't really have any good speed. You have Kartana as the only thing at over 100 at 109. And then you have Articuno at 85 coming in second place. And yeah. just from how I'm looking at his team, you're going to have to run that kind of as a support Pokemon. Because, uh, you know, that's one of your only defoggers other than Kartana. And I don't think you want to run defog on Kartana. Yeah, his speed... Think you also have Rapid Spin. Yeah, his speed's definitely lacking a bit. Um, he does have the Sand Rush Drake result. I have no idea is how good that is. Is that Speed Boost Blaziken? Yeah, that is Speed Boost Blaziken. So it's, I, I guess his speed isn't that bad. Um, you know, he's got he's got decent priority too. Actually, like, pretty good priority. Sucker Punch on Bisharp. He's got uh, Shadow Snake on Aegislash. Um... And like I said, he's got the Sand Rush Drake Azolt if he ever needs it. Um, so like the speed is a, a bit bad, but it's it's not terrible, I think. Um, my main thing with this is with his his draft is I think he only has one special attacker in Articuno. You can uh, run Aegislash specially. Yeah, you can. You also technically could run Blaziken special. He does have one ten special attack, but his yeah. move pool is super limiting. He like it's. I think Scorching Sand is the only other move, or other only non-stab move that he gets on the special side. Yeah. Well, Solar Beam, I guess. But yeah, I would think you definitely want to... I mean, if you're playing him, playing DJ and Khan, you just, um, you know, you bring, instead of, like, maxing out your, your HP, you max out your defense for the most part, except for, like, something for Articuno or maybe an Aegislash set. So I think that's a pretty, pretty big downfall. Is just all their their physical attackers. Yeah. And fire types. That's a major problem for this team. Mm -hmm. You have Bisharp, Aegislash, Gloom, Kartana, Articuno. They yeah, don't really super, want to switch into a fire part. type move. Yeah, and if you're if you're forced to run like defensive Gyarados, it's kind of bad. I mean, he's pretty good defensive, but Dragon Dance is really good. I mean, the fire weakness is is very real, very bad. Um, yeah. I know it's kind of nitpicky, but I don't, I don't like his later picks and some of the NFEs he has. Because you have, you kind of want to run, like, an Eviolite on something, but then you're just even more knockoff weak. So you're kind of just, I don't know why you have a Gloom, maybe just for Toxic Spikes removal. Are these, are these first two, um, drafts, the, the only ones that have more than two one-point mods? Uh, I'm not sure. Is Gloom at one point? I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is like, well, actually, I I really think Boldor is a great one point mon. If you look at its stats, it's actually pretty yeah, that's decent. true. And it sets up Sand for the Drake Assault. so that's like a really clutch one point mon. But other, I mean, Gloom's like decent, I think. But uh, that has its uses. But I think uh, they're one point Pokemon for a reason. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, and there's a couple other drafts that have two. I think those are the only drafts that have more than two one-point Pokemon. Yeah. Um, their only hazard setter is Bulldore 2, which is very bad. So, technically, so Bisharp actually gets Stealth Rocks. 
How would I know that? Um, yeah, I Bolt. looked it up earlier because like, mm, I think so. Yeah. It's but, a... but still, very bad hazards. Yeah. Boldor actually does not get sand stream, by the way. Oh wait, what? Yeah, it's sturdy and sand force. Oh, that, so that changes my opinion a lot. Because yeah, they can't set up a Dracozole. Ooh, that makes their speed so, even worse. Right. So it's really just clicking stealth rocks, and that's about all I see it coming out of Boldor. Oh no. Yeah, literally clicking stealth rocks. I mean, yeah, they don't really have any hazards. They don't even really have good removal either. No, they don't. It's Articuno Cartana. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty bad removal. Also, one thing I noticed, I don't. Do they have any pivots? I don't know if they do. So does Blaziken uh, get U turn? Maybe. Yes, Articuno, Blaziken, and Tapu Bulu all get U turn. Wait, Tapu Bulu Bulu gets, gets U turn? What? I'm pretty sure. Unless I don't I, think so. I'm pretty unless confident. Unless I'm marking correctly. Pretty Double check that. Yeah, it doesn't. So I, I think. I could have sworn it did. No, it, it definitely no, doesn't. That's. That's true. Yeah, yeah I, I, think, I guess Blaziken I does get U turn, just... but, but yeah, that's it's also pretty bad to not have any, any pivots like that. Maybe Drake's ult gets full switch. I don't know. Uh, not that it really. That's true. I don't remember being surprised that it didn't. Yeah, it does not get full switch. Does Gyarados get flip turn? Uh, I don't believe so, but I'll double check for you right now. Yeah, but regardless, they they're. Are. Yeah. Yeah, their their pivots are very lacking too. So there's I mean there's a lot of problems with this draft. Speed um, is is not great. And um, what's supposed to take a hit here? Right. Like they don't really have a wall core to speak of. I mean, I, you know, you can run Bulu defensive, you can run like Aegis Last defensive, you can run Articuno, Gloom it I, I think actually does a little yeah, bit. See, the only thing though is if you're running all these things defensive then you're really lacking offensively. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't very high in this draft. There's a lot of problems. Um, I gave it a 2 out of 10. I gave it a 3. I think I'll agree with the 2. <laughs> yeah. Can't believe I was the high one on this one. So then we get to Kish's draft, which I was actually very pleasantly surprised with. I didn't notice this draft till later, but I think this is a very solid draft. Um, he's got great speed, great priority. Well, good priority. Um, like a great water fire grass core. Yeah. Yeah. You fire also have grass. A steel dragon fairy as well. Yeah, that's true. He's got pretty good hazard options. Um, you know, rock, guard trump's a good rocker. Uh, he's got the sticky web, is, of course, probably the best sticky web user in the game. Um, I think one of only four Pokemon, I think three to be drafted, that even gets sticky web, right? Right. And Jirachi's also a pretty good rocker, too. I guess he doesn't, and I think Venusaur gets T-Spikes, right? So. Uh, I, don't I don't think he does, to, actually. I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah, his hazards still are pretty decent, though. Yeah. Right. Um, I just... Noticing during the actual draft, the pre marina pick, just where it was, was very good. Yeah. Because it completed Firewater Grass and uh, Dragon Steel Fairy all in like at once. Well, he didn't get a Fire and Grass till later, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. His Pokemon just synergize well together. He's got like a good defensive core, he's got good offense, you know? His speed's very like spread out and tiered um well i guess not tiered right it's like sort of more of like a spectrum um the the only the, the biggest downside I, I found with his draft is his only removal is a Volca, which is pretty terrible right i agree he's with not that. necessarily hazard well uh eh, weevil and Entei. yeah i mean that's kind of a big deal and galvantula i guess um so yeah i mean he definitely needs more removal or he's going to become overly reliant on heavy duty boots yeah. What do you guys think? I think uh, Torkoal would be a really good pickup for him because it gives. Yeah. It powers really up would. Entei. It gives Venusaur uh, chlorophyll. Yeah. Um, and it gives him a, it gives him removal too. Uh, not just that. If he is going to run a Sun Team, having Trevenant's not terrible. Oh yeah, Trevenant harvest. too. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 
True. So you can kind of do some funny shenanigans with Harvest and Citrus. Although berries. I don't know, Trevenant and Trevenant and the Sun is is not the best, but it's just... know, it depends on the matchup. But I don't know if you'd want to want to run Trevenant and Venusaur too. Yeah, true. But yeah, no, I think Torque will be a good pickup for him. Um, but yeah, besides like not having any hazard removal, I I really like this draft. That's sort of the one big blemish on this draft for me. Kind of weak to ground. Uh, yeah, I can see that little. A little bit. It's got the truck. Because Venus was. Mhm. I don't have too much else to say. I I think I thought it was pretty good. Um. Just kind of skeptical a little bit. For some reason, something just didn't sit right. I don't remember what what it was when I was making this, but like, I feel like there's there's one issue I missed. Um, I still think it's a pretty good, but uh, good, pretty good draft. Okay, yeah, I gave it a uh, eight out of ten. I, I like it. Uh, I had it at a seven. Yeah, I, th I, I think I'll go. I think I'll go eight, just because it's really solid. Um, there's a lot of potential to either pick up, like you said, Torkoal, but even if you leave as is, it's still really hard to plan for. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to Mr. Shock's draft. Um, let's see what I have on him. He's pretty lackluster in speed, um, also in priority. I don't know if he really has any priority. I'm looking now. But yeah, speed Not is definitely fun. a problem, and that was actually on display pretty hard in his, his first matchup. Where he had to run triple scarf. Um, oh, he ran triple scarf. Yeah, he ran triple scarf. But yeah, speed. I don't, he doesn't have anything above a hundred, right? Yeah, that's that's pretty uh, terrible. Durant at one hundred nine, Cavalian at one hundred eight. Oh, that's and true. At hundred. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, speed's pretty bad, and he doesn't really have any priority either. I um, will say though that I really liked his first two picks in Lando T and Clefable. You can kind of run them pretty much however you need based on the matchup. Yeah, they're very versatile. And then Mantine is, I think, a really, really good value pick for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always like Mantine. Um, he... I think it was kind of to fire. Outside of... I mean, Victini and Mantine, I guess, the only switch-ins. Lando T is like a fine fire switch in Well, if it's physical. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I can you see kind that. Of just throw a Mantine into it anyway, and you just roost off the damage. Yeah, um, he's got really good uh, rock setters: Lando T, Clefable, even Cobalion. Uh, but yeah. he only has rocks. Oh, and Deancey even. But yeah. yeah, only only rocks, which is definitely not great. Um, I just think offensive power could kind of be a weakness as well, because you typically want something that's. Um, you're lucky you get up to 130 in one of your attacking or special attacking stats, and I didn't really see that on too much. Well, he's got his... the Lando and the Porygon Z, which I think is actually pretty good wall breakers. I say if, unless if he's running defensive Clefable, um, the only like special attacking offense offense he has is Porygon Z. Porygon Z. Maybe Rotomo, I guess, but. Mm -hmm. Grass is not. I mean, just having Leaf Storm isn't great. Yeah. What else? Um, I really, I, I just like he's got a lot of like balance between special attack and physical attack. I already talked about the Lando Porygon. He's got the Victini, which can run either. Um, he's got you know Cobalion, which can run either. Um, so he's got good options there. Twinge is also a decent pick, just because you kind of have to prep for it. You can't just, you know, say, mm, it's not going to be a threat, and then the one week you don't prep for it, he brings it, and he sweeps you. Mm -hmm. You just have to have something. Yeah. I was going to say one thing. I'm not really sure what Deancey is doing on this team, because he's already got a rocker. Well, he's got many rockers, actually. He's already got a fairy type. Well, actually, 
is there one? No, that's. Oh yeah, go fable. It's uh yeah. Yeah, so like I don't really know. Like, isn't Deancey just a worse Clefable like every single week? Kind of. Um, I mean, I guess it checks like stuff with flying types? with Diamond Storm. Yeah, I mean, like it's an okay like bird good. check, but Lando T does that pretty decent already. And he's even got so, so there's Cabalion, kind of. Yeah, well, eh, not not super well, but yeah, I I just I think he could get something over Deancey. Um, I mean, I think it's decent value for a four. A four cost Pokemon. Yeah, I was I was definitely looking at a draft in DNC. Um, so was I. But I decided against it. Um, yeah, and the other thing I was gonna say, like I I think the best thing about this draft is his, his wall core. Um, I agree. But the it is lacking a little bit of reliable recovery. Um, like I think he's only got Mantine and Clefable, right? So yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I, you could use one more Pokemon with with good recovery options. I would say. Right, because I think he has Wish on Clefable, and I don't think anything else has some heal, something else. Just having one Wish Pokemon, if you use it properly, could be nice. Yeah, Clefable's arguably the best Wish Pokemons. So. I think Blissey has a B just because of how it's it's. Uh... Yeah, that's a good point. Actually, with its massive HP stat and how Wish handles it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, we should move on. But I, it's an okay draft. Um, I mean, the speed and the priority is is a big issue for me. I would say, um, and I really value speed in drafts. So um, that that cut it down a little bit for me. I gave it a six out of ten. Give it a six and a half. I'll give it a six as well. I think. Alrighty, moving on to Mr. To Greg. Me. What do I have on Greg? Um, you've got pretty solid speed. Um, I would say you, you're lacking a bit of priority, though. What you have, the Rillaboom, and then, like, Sucker Punch so, on Mandibuzz, but that's it, I think. That's about it, yeah. yeah. Comfey, Com too, technically. Oh, that's true. But it's very niche. Yeah, so yeah, priority could be better, but it's not a big deal. Um, I just really, I think you 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 just got a lot of team synergy. You've got really good type synergy. You've got really good balance between special attackers and physical attackers. Like, for example, you've got your Rillaboom, who wall breaks on the physical side. And then, like, Bocephalon on the special side, yeah, like you said. Um, like, the Jolteon does a lot with for you for being faster. Um... And, like, your wall core is really solid, I think. Like, Slowbro Manimus, so, Steelix. Slowbro Manimus is, yeah. That's yeah. Like disgusting. Yeah, like, his, his wall core is really great. Um, I also have Steelix for some yeah. niches. Like, a 200 defense is actually kind of insane. Yeah. One thing I was going to say is I'm not really sure what Blastoise does. Removal is fine. You've got Mana Buzz, um, who's, like, a really great defogger. I did learn recently that Blastoise does get Shell Smash. It gets Shell fun. Smash. Oh. Shell Smash, it also has... I, I wanted Rapid Spin just in case I had already set up uh, Rocks myself or Toxic Spikes. I yeah. figure it never hurts. Um, plus it gives me another, I guess, bulky option to use should I want to. Yeah, I just feel like it's always a worse option than Slowbro pretty much unless yeah. you're facing something that's really weak to... Or that like Psychic really is a hindrance to Slowbro. But yeah, um, I I would say you could use another wall breaker. Um, but Cephalon isn't that great at wall breaking. Like you've got a good sweeper and comma O, but otherwise your power is a little bit lacking. I think. Yeah, I kind of just have to hit it hard or set up or something on them. I'm realizing, but uh, I think once I get going, having something like Beast Boost is just kind of insane. And I have some decent, I have some pretty good setup options in, like, Comfey and Blastoise. Yeah, no, you've got good setup. It's just kind of, like, wall-breaking. Your only thing kind of is Rillaboom, I think. Like, early game, like, breaking down a wall core, you know? Uh, what else did I have on you? Um, you don't have a Grounded Poison, and I think you're actually a little bit T-Spike weak. 
for sure. Rillaboom is does not appreciate T spikes. Como, Slowbro. No, that's true, but I kind of can hopefully mitigate that with aromatherapy or heal bell. Yeah, and your and your yeah, Defogger is also that. flying, which is which is yeah. very nice for you. So it's not a huge issue, just something I noticed. Um, oh yeah, and the last thing I had is um, you're a little bit biased towards the physical side on your defense. Um, I guess pretty much all your your defensive cores is, is more physically defensive and specially defensive. So you could that's, use that's, something that's more, a good point. more specially is, defensive for sure. Is Comfe defensive at all? I'm not familiar with its stat block. Yeah, Comfe. It's actually more specially defensive. Like that's that's the one thing that he does okay. have that's really specially bulky. That's what I thought, but I wasn't sure. But it, it only has 51 HP. 51 HP, 110 oh, okay. spadef. So it's it's gotcha, not the gotcha. best. No. Yeah. True, but I have Mandibuzz, which has a pretty decent HP pool, so you can kind of mitigate it. Yeah, it's that, again not a huge system. issue. Um. Yeah. I I think you it's a really solid draft. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say you you kind of share the same problem I do, where your wall core is weak to the same type. Obviously, you have Jolteon Steelix to deal with it, uh, and Como. I guess and really, I mean, I guess you do have a lot of electric resists, but yeah. that is one thing to point out. Plus, both absorb Jolteon in general. Right, right, right. And Trapage, obviously. Yeah, of course. I'm just gonna bring <laughs> Can't everyone get trapage. Listen, Arena Trap is gonna get someone. Yeah, it'll get someone. Yeah, it's, well, it's got what, what, 130 attack? Yeah, it's actually kind of insane. I didn't realize it until I looked at it, and I was like, I just want something for Arena Trap. Because right. it's one point, it's probably one of the best one point mons available. I agree. Um, That's a good if point. If someone's running Trick Room, and I have Trap Inch for it, something's dying. Mm -hmm. I don't know what. Could be Trap Inch, could be theirs, but something's going on. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, no, I, I like this draft overall. Um, I think it's just a, maybe the offense is a little bit underwhelming. Um, I'm not a huge fan of like Blacephalon, I would say, and Como, so I gave it a seven and a half out of ten. But I, I think it's definitely solid. Yeah, I, I know I rated mine highly. Uh, give it a plus one for just being my undraft. I gave it a nine, um, mainly because mm -hmm. I, based on what I, the the plans I had. Um, I think it works exactly how I want to play it. But you did steal my pick right before me, so. What did I steal? Your Volcarona? You, yeah, you took Volcarona. I yeah, Volcarona would have been so nice for you. <laughs> oh my god. I, I was just waiting. I had I had a dream that Dragon Ball would fall and hoping that no one actually, you know, followed Sun, uh, Sword and Shield too heavily and that it would just slip into my lap. But I was not that lucky. Uh, what are you thinking for the rating, Cole? Uh, I think I think eight just because I think it covers its weaknesses pretty yeah. well. It's, I mean, it's just really solid. You can't really. Yeah, I can see that. Take I'd it probably, apart too much. Probably rated really just a little bit low. I don't know. I just don't. Some of the mons I just have a personal preference against. So. Uh, okay, moving on to my draft then. When you guys can right. start. Uh, I'll go ahead and start. Um, I was actually talking to Docto while the draft was going on, and I said, if Ben gets Lantern, it's kind of just over. And with your next pick, you took Lantern. I think that was actually a really good pick for you. And um, I actually think you could kind of get away with running a rain team a little bit because uh, you have Torrenty and Barrascuta. Right. And if you have it Barrascuta in rain just with your high base speed, you don't really have to invest too heavily in speed, and then you can either, you know, bulk it up a little bit more in HP, or you can just make sure you have 252 attack, and you kind of just hit, like, a truck. So, overall, I really liked it, except for Archeops. I don't like that Pokemon. I think it's just bad. Hmm. I um, think Archeops could, could do okay. I mean, I haven't seen it since, like, Heavy Duty Boots came out, but I feel like that helps so much. There's also that new item that lets you not take recoil, right? Oh, was that actually a thing? So I, I don't know about that Goodness. one. Goodness. I didn't know about that. But I, saw it, I saw it because I was looking at Melmetal. What is it? Protective Pads? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
I didn't. I actually didn't know how those were. Oh wait, no, sorry. I thought, I, Ad, I it says it was just... it's protected from adverse contact effects. I'm probably wrong. yeah. I was about to say. Yeah, oh, okay. Like, I think that's just for rough skin, like rocky helmet stuff like that. Never mind. But yeah, but heavy duty boots helps a lot. I think. Um. So the, yeah, the lantern was funny. I didn't even realize it till I was gonna get like something else. I forget. And I was like, wait a second. Like lantern's like perfect for me. Like it's it synergizes really well with torn T and Tangrove. Did you want a Moga? Because I think everyone wanted a Moga at some yeah, point. Yeah, I was gonna get a Moga actually. So. Dude, I wanted a I wanted a Moga too. So <laughs> yeah. <good. laughs> um, yeah, and then Archie Ops was really more just for the speed, and also I wanted another physical attacker because it was a little bit lacking. So, um, something I noticed is yeah. a lot of teams lose something for bringing in something to remove toxic fights, but you have one of the few I would say few viable like grounded poison Pokemon that were actually picked up. Yeah. And Nido King, I I think that's a really good pick, especially with Sheer Force. Yeah, I wanted a wall breaker. I didn't really have a good wall breaker. Like I had, I have Volcarona, which sweeps, but it doesn't wall break. I mean, Torn T is like a fine wall breaker, but I wanted another one, so Nido King was my pick. I was really hoping I would get Mammoth Swine, but it didn't drop to me. Now, plus you have two regenerators as well. Something interesting is three you have Moxie. Sorry, three. Yeah, my bad. Three. Oh, uh, Slow yeah, King. It's, it's Holy slow King, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that Slowking was a... It. And also, I don't know why Slowking is six points. I feel like that thing is... Slowking Galar? Like, that thing's like yeah, an OU threat. It is an OU threat. I think and... it doesn't get teleport, though, I think. Is yeah, no, that's people rate, right. it, rate it lower. Right, yeah. So, I, I like which, that. Which is weird, but... I would say one thing you also have is... You have um, three, like, pretty good uh, knockoff Pokemon and Scrafty, Team Growth, and Torn T. Mm-hmm. So, and that's always that's always good because I think you need at least one to bring every week. Yeah, I like my knockoff options. Um, what do I have? Clefki's also room? so great for. I love Clefki. Doing literally whatever you want it to. Yeah. Yeah, Clefki, and I'll, oh yeah, I was gonna say about the rain. I did look into getting a rain team late later on because I realized that. Um, it's just that I didn't really want. Uh, like I wanted to get Lantern. And like Polytoad and Pelipper just wouldn't have fit, and also they're just too expensive. Um, yeah, but I do have Clefki that can set up Rain Dance, which yes, honestly I, is... I checked. I checked. I wanted to see yeah. if I could get. Like it, it removes it from that. Yeah. Wait, Vol Volcano or what? It it kind of gets hurt because you kind of want to use Fiery Dance as well just to keep up in your your stats. Um, and in Rain, it's just not going to do as much. Well, Volcano. I mean, if I'm using Rain Dance, I'm like sending out Barrascuta. Yeah. So it's fine. But yeah, Klefki Rain Dance is really nice. I actually brought it against Pokey and ended up using it in order to stop a, an Excadrill sweep. I brought uh, Swift Swim with Rain Dance. Um, and also just removes a weakness on Klefki too, so it's good. Like Klefki's pretty say... hard to touch with like Magnet yeah. Rise and Rain Dance. That's true. I was going to say, like, weakness wise, you're kind of weak to like a ground rock combo, which is pretty easy to get yeah i can definitely see the ground weakness a little bit um i mean obviously you have like you have tangrowth and torn t but um what else what else was that there i get in and then like obviously like bronze or but yeah bronze if you had like uh if you had like i feel like a lot of pokemon can easily run like earthquake and stone edge or something like that yeah um yeah, my speed ended up being okay. I was worried about my speed for a while there, but I, I got Archaeops, which I think solves a little bit. Um, my priority could be better. So. Is Nidoking King one or two speed, or is he below? Oh, no, it's like 85. 85, okay. No, 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 no. Yeah. I always think it's faster than it is. So I got Barrasque to Torrenty, Archaeops, and then I dropped down to 100. Yeah. Um, which isn't bad, especially with who ended up getting drafted. You have some of the higher speeds. There's a lot of Pokemon that just don't even... Hit yeah. The other two, I have a, a little bit of a ghost weakness, um, which I, at the time, or at the draft, I thought, like, oh, it's not really a big deal. Like, ghost isn't really a common type. But now with Aegislash in the in the draft, a Dragapult, and... Dragapult Gengar. Oh, oh, Inspector, too. Like, there's some there's some ghost threats. So I think I, I need to... Yeah, yeah like there really are, actually. This generation ghost is just pretty common and pretty good yeah and i didn't have something that. to deal with it so i i would have liked to see you get maybe like a better dark type in 
Yeah. But I think he probably had what, what the best that was available. Uh. Yeah, I really like Scrafty. It's so versatile. It can run defensive. It can run setup. It can run like any kind of weird set you want. But having it, intimidate it, is always a good thing. Yeah, intimidator. I needed that. Um, but it's not like especially get special ghost types. Like I really struggle. I don't really have a good switching at all. Um, so. I'll be looking to fix that. But that's kind of my biggest issue with the draft, which really isn't that big of a deal. Um, yeah. Unless you guys have anything else. No. I mean, I gave you an 8.5 out of 10. Uh, I liked it for, for what it was worth. Uh, I did also write down that you were annoyingly bulky. Yeah, that, I mean, that regenerated chorus is like... Yeah. Yeah, I'm really happy really with, with how the regen core worked out and all my pivots. I've got a ton of pivots on my team. So. I don't want to fight that. <laughs> Is that. Week four or week five, I think. Yeah, I gave myself a nine. Yeah, I I agree with with with. I'll say I'll say I'll say half, eight and a half just to okay. not give you the satisfaction. Okay, moving on to Cowie's draft, which uh, is I, very impressive to me. I think it's the best overall draft. I think not only is this the best overall draft, but I think this might be the best draft ever I've seen in the RPO. Maybe, maybe I had a better one. One season I got like Manaphy and Victini, like in the last couple rounds, and it was a free draft. But I think this is like an insanely good draft. Really, really amazing draft. Um, yeah, he took he took Halucha for me. Uh, but yeah. seeing him get get Coco Halucha kind of just scares me because you know what he's doing every week. He's running Sword Stance Halucha with Umberton in the Electric Seed. And either you're going to have something that can check that or force it out or you're going to get swept. So. so, yeah. I mean, it's not it's not only Halucha, too. Like, he's got the best speed in the draft. He's got Latias. He's got Zarud, which is so good. I love the Zarud pick for him. Um, and he's got Coco, obviously. So his speed is really great. And he can just, yeah. It's 130, 118, 110, 105 for his top right. four. And then he, he drops a bit, and then he's at Deli Bird at 75. Oh, well, yeah, just don't um, count that. That's like, don't... honestly, my, my biggest complaint with the draft is, is like, the Deli Bird pick. But... Okay, so I thought so as well, and then I looked into it a bit. It gets Hustle, so it's all right for attacking. It also gets rapid spin in Aurora Veil, so it yeah, might that's have interesting. a niche. It's not good. So I I don't see him being bringing Del Deli Bird. I, mean, he's not. I think I think he'll bring it most at the of very end pretty good once. Um. Anyway, my I think my actual biggest issue with the draft is uh, maybe his priority is a little bit lacking. I don't. What priority does he have? Like. Uh, does he have Sucker Punch on Incineroar? I think that's it. So Priority is pretty bad, honestly. Uh, but it, it's not a huge deal. His Both his offense and his defense are just so good. The Weezing Galar is such a great pick. I don't know why that thing was so low. I, I had it on my radar for a long time. Yeah. But it just, I don't know it how just didn't work dropped. out with what I had. I think it dropped because it's better in doubles, um, where you can kind of run some cheese red gigas, like and not have to deal with slow start. So I think that's why it kind of is not as worth it in points. It's still a pretty decent Pokemon. Yeah. I also I was gonna say like I didn't really get the Magnezone pick, but I didn't understand that now it has that new move that like makes it insane. Uh, wait, what move? wait, what move? Um, it has. I'm looking at it now. Where is it? Oh, body press. Well, it has body press, but it also has a electric move that does... Is it rising rising voltage? The yeah, one rising that works voltage. in the terrain. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That yeah, so that thing's really good. Body press, also, rising also voltage. Also gets teleport. Ooh, I didn't even know that. So that's kinda crazy. Yeah. yeah. So magnet magnet zone's pretty sure. solid. I mean its speed is pretty bad, but you can work around it. But yeah, no, he's got he's got good physical walls, Incineroar, Zarude, Weezing. He's got good special walls, Latias, Palo Sand. Um, yeah, my only, I guess, issue with it is I would have preferred a more, like, a better offensive ghost type. Because I think it just hits hard. 
but you know, Palisand's not bad. Hmm. That's nitpicking. I still get. I still am very yeah. high on this draft. Yeah, his the, removal. The synergies there. Yeah, his removal is really great. Um, his hazards are pretty solid. I think what he's got rocks on a, on Seismitoad, Palosand, and Armaldo. Um, I think he, yeah, and Armaldo. Does he? Is that all he has? He has oh, toxic spikes, spikes. from Galarian Weasel. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's pretty good. And he has two rapid spinners, four defoggers. Yeah, he his, has his, his best Pokemon insane. that can pivot. He has dual screens on three Pokemon as well if he wants. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I gave it a 10 out of 10. There's very little in that pick. The priority is probably the biggest thing for me. Yeah, I, I gave it a 9.5, um, but that is my highest one. So if you want to call it a 10, go for it. Great job, Cowie, if you're listening. Yes, I, I'd give it a 10, 10 as well, just learning. I, I honestly did, like, Magnezone, for me, yeah, like, learning the new stuff it got makes it so much better. So yeah, it's going to be really hard to, to plan for this. <laughs> How he's saying, uh... Weeks two through seven, I'm bringing Choice Man, Ice Shard, Delibird, and we'll sweep everyone. <laughs> With spikes, right? Yeah, Delibird also has spikes. Yeah. Delibird is the, the, the jack of all trades for my team. And everyone will lose to Delibird. Nice. And I'm telling you, I told you. It's gonna be good. He's gonna bring it. Good thing we're on the other side of the bracket, so he can't sweep us with Delibird. <laughs> All right, moving on to Pandy. And oh my god, Pandy's wall breakers are insane. He's got so much power. It's actually insane. He's got a Spectre, which is a monster. He's got this Urshifu rapid spin thing, or rapid strike. Rapid strike. Which rapid is spin. like, <laughs> which I didn't even notice at all. But it, it, that thing's so good. It gets Aqua Jet, it gets like a really, it, it gets a diverse move pool. Um, He's got Buzzwool, which hits really hard. Um, he's got Heatran, which can hit hard. Uh, even Sloking, like Future Sight, like is really nice. Toxtricity is, is like really powerful too. Like the power on this man's draft is so scary. So if you're gonna take the positives, I'm gonna go ahead and steal the negative. Uh, what hazard removal? Uh, yeah, just, that, it, that's it doesn't like exist. The, it's just... literally no removal. Yeah. Literally no rule. I, when when I saw your notes and it was like, yeah, there's nothing. I, I was like, there has to be something. Rapid spin on something. Defunct. Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, that's that's a big problem. Although it, it's probably not as big of a problem because of um, heavy duty boots. Yeah, heavy duty boots. Also, he does have grounded poison, which is at least nice for T spikes. Um, His team also just isn't very weak to hazards. Yeah. So yeah, it, like, it's not uh, that big of a deal. It's it's definitely like a little bit of a problem. In fact, does he not have any any rock wizard or rock weaknesses at all? Uh, rock weaknesses? No. No. So that's he why doesn't have any rocks aren't really. So that, honestly, it's bad. really not uh, a big deal. Cutie fly. Okay, yeah. It's cute, but the, yeah, it's kitty fly. You're... Yeah, it, it's not a big deal though. Like, considering he doesn't have any rocks weaknesses, he's got a grounded poison. Um. Yeah, unless you're, like, running spikes against them. Spikes are kind of bad, I guess, but not everyone has spikes on their team. He also has three regenerators. Oh, does he and have three? Does it, oh, it's wait, Tangela, what? Oh, Tangela, Tangela, yeah. And then Galarian Slowbro. Wow, I didn't even wow, notice that. That's true. And I, I love Tangela. I'm a big Tangela fan. I mean, I got Tangrowth this, this round, but I always like having either Tangela or Tangrowth on my team. Um, Zorak is also really good, just because... You yeah. kind of bait just out. the mind games yeah. you always have to think about it so i will say though the one thing is sure it's a great ghost type but uh spectre's just move pool is kind of limited you don't have much coverage it so is you're kind of just clicking like shadow ball or something the entire yeah time. although ghost so is you're hoping it kills ghost is one of the most spammable offensive moves to be fair but yeah. it is it is limited nonetheless yeah i'm just realizing that zero rock plus spectre is it yeah. is it combo? Cause yeah, it's kind of like the Zoro <laughs> pick is really great because not only he also is lacking speed, which is another kind of issue. He's got Spectre and then Zoro and then that's it. Yeah, what's the Zoro pick is very very nice. Toxicity is base seventy five, so you're at Spectre yeah. at one thirty, Zoro at one hundred five, yeah. and then it's Urshifu Rapid Strike at ninety seven, and then Cutie Flight eighty four. So I was talking to Pandy earlier. I told him because um, he also he has a he has a 
he has like no EQ immunities or yeah, no EQ immunities and um, only one resist. Or I guess two, Buzzwall and Tangla. So I was saying he should get, he should drop like Toxtricity and like Buzzwall and then get like uh, or uh, Thunderous Incarnate. Cause that'll give him speed and an immunity. Although I guess it will give him a Rock's weakness, but. Right. You can, you can probably run Heavy Duty Boots on, on Thunderous Incarnate pretty easily. Um, yeah, also he doesn't have a fairy type besides like Q to Fly, which it doesn't count. So. Yeah, stupid. <laughs> So no no fairy type um, speeds lacking a little his priority is like pretty good though he's got aqua jet and stuff um, he himself doesn't have great hazards though it's heatran and cutie fly from yeah. what I can see yeah which is Quack, sorry, does Quacksaron get stealth rocks no I don't believe so wow it yeah it's kind of bad it's what recover and toxic are too things you just stall but yeah um yeah anyone else have any other things to talk about here. I'm trying to look for like a common weakness, but there really aren't that many. I just have that. Yeah, ground a little flash bit. Flash fire and water absorb is nice. You can just immune fire. Yeah, up, man. Right? Yeah, it's like his, his, it's like his wall core is really, really good. good. Regenerator, and then he's got all the power, in the like that you could ever want. So it, it's just a really threatening draft. Um, yeah, I gave it. I gave it eight and a half. Eight and a half out of ten. Um. Pretty pretty solid draft. Yeah, initially I gave it a seven, but I I think after all this, I think I am definitely a bit too low. I think I want to bump that up to about an eight. Yeah. I think it's pretty good. I think I'd have to go. I'll, I'll go nine just because I think it's already good as as is, and with a few like switches, a few transact transactions, it could be like top of the top. Yeah. Alrighty, moving on to Diego and bunnies. Anyone want to start with this? I, I got it. All right, so we got happen. the bog. It's the bog boys here. All right. Oh my god. Um, and uh, it's insanely defensive, but it has the best wish Pokemon in the game in Blissey. So good job, guys. Um, and then having the packs is always a plus. Uh. You know, my, my one main complaint is have a dark type. That would do you some that'd be great for you. I don't wanna go for now. I don't wanna stick everything. I think what's crazy is that the first three mods are obviously super defensive, but then everything after that Yeah, they pivoted I super like, hard off the defense. Yeah, I don't know why they like, did that. Just draft. And a like whole the mods team. they got are fast. Like obviously Storm and Trio super fast, really good support. Yeah, they actually have really good speed, which is so weird. And then Kyrm, their mannequin, you could scarf them and, you know, maybe not even that, but it's, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. It's very weird how they pivoted off of the stall. I think, I thought they were going to go full stall and it was going to be a really good draft. And it's still like a pretty solid draft, but I, I don't know if, if quite the, like, offense synergizes very well. Like, the offense is fast, um, but does it isn't really? I mean, you got Kiram, which is, is a really good wall breaker. Otherwise, it's a little bit lacking in power. Um, and it's an, and it's like the defense is very passive. So it's just a little odd to me how they drafted. It's gonna be. I think it's gonna be hard to wear things down. You know. So one thing I noticed is they have Chinchino with Skill Link, and so I, that gets what Bullet Seed, Rock Blast, Tail Slap. Yeah, Chinchino so is actually have, so um, good. Yeah, so the one thing is just Rocky Helmet. It's going to be kind of annoying for them, but other than that, you're kind of good. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Kiram has pressure, so... That's true. That's something. Yeah. Um, and you have Wish, and so you can kind of just throw something out there, and as long as it's not one shot, you can kind of just bring it back in full. Yeah. Or, yeah, I just wish right. they, they pivoted more, or they didn't pivot. They stayed with the, the stall. Got Shedinja. That was taken before them. I think they wanted that, like, late. But... Well, late, but yeah, they, they could have got it earlier. Um, yeah, no. Raichu is actually, like, is kind of important to uh, for um, Toxpex Skarmory. Why is that? 
uh, DS Lightning Run, so it's electric immunity. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, um, I didn't even notice the electric weakness, but I was going to say they have a really bad ground weakness. You have Volt Absorb on Raichu for that. Or, um, is it Volt Absorb? Or... Maybe it's both. It's Volt Absorb. I don't, I don't know. Doug Trio that. also is. Yeah. yeah. No, I think they're okay. I'm, well, they're a little electric weak, but it's not too bad. But I, I think ground weak is, is, is a pretty big problem for them. They've got it's... the Skarmory immunity, obviously, but then other than that, they've got nothing else for it. And they've I got mean, a few weaknesses. The, the weaknesses are what? Trimanosan, Raichu? Toxapex, and then which is Toxapex great. just eats it up, though. No, it doesn't. I mean, like, that's how you that's how you beat Toxapex. You, you just spam EQ, you know? I think you can kind of get around it with, like, Black Sludge, and then you recover Baneful Bunker, recover Baneful Bunker while you throw it a Toxic at some point. I think you can wear it. Down I don't know. I mean, you you arm. definitely. I mean, the, you should definitely get. I think they should definitely get a grass type to, maybe maybe another ground immunity, but I think they definitely need something better for for earthquake switches. The girder pick doesn't make any sense to me. I think it just hits hard. Girders. At that point. Yeah, I don't, it's kind of weird, I guess. Uh, how expensive was it? Let me see. I think it actually might get defogged. Does it? it does. No it does. way. It does. Because I know yeah, Con gets Conqueror defog. gets defogged. Yeah, yeah. It gets defogged. Well, speaking of that, um, their the removal is like insane. It's the best in a draft, I think. Mm -hmm. They got Skarmory. They got Starmie. They got I mean, Hiram technically. Girder's three points. Girder. Yeah, I think Girder's a good three-point mod. Um, yeah. yeah, the removal is very good. Um, which is why I think Shedinja would have been great for them. But anyway. Um... They also really you know could use a fairy type. I don't know. You can't just not have a fairy type on a on a defensive team like this. Yeah, Dragon actually is pretty good against this team. Yeah, Skarmory's their only resist. I will yeah. say too, if if you anticipate them to bring Toxpec Skarmory Bliss Blissy to every game, like the the with the remaining three three slots they have, it's very limited on what like they can bring. Because like if they want to bring Raichu to be the bolt absorb or lightning rod or whatever, then that's two slots, and so you can't bring everything. Yeah, well, I think they're I think Kiram is going to be like their MVP. So I, I mean, they bring Peck, Skarm, Blissey, Kiram every game, and then it's just a matter of filling it out. After that, Chinchino shows up a lot, and I think it's probably Darmanitan. Yeah. And, and then I think oh, yeah. Darm, it rotates. Darmsake. And it rotates between, like, what? I think it's Darm or Chinchino, probably most likely not both. And then it's Doug Trio or Raichu. And then Star Meat. One mm -hmm. of those three. Um, they also could use some setup. They don't really have any setup options. Something like a Salamence type thing. Or you can, like, <laughs> Belly Jump Darm. Yeah. A dark type as well would be nice to tank a psychic. Oh, they don't have a dark type. I didn't even notice that. Which is pretty bad for Pex. Like honestly, they did it's not draft pack. draft very well around Pex. Like they they are ground weak. They are psychic weak. They are a little bit electric weak. Right. And yeah, steel that's a good point. Psychic any, or does steel resist psychic? No, right. Yes. No. It does. Let me double check. You'd think I'd know after all these times. It's actually a, like a weird matchup that you never really think about. Um, yeah, but overall, I mean, the, the, the wall course is still very threatening with Pex, Skarm, Blissey. Kiram is so good for this draft, too. Like, oh my god, Kiram. Darman and going to be really good for them. Um, their synergy around those mons are a little questionable, but I, I still think that core is really great. So, I gave it a 7 out of 10 for that. I was going to say that the core is weak to set up, but it's really not, because Skarm gets... Whirlwind and Tox Space gets haze. Yep. So, yeah. Wow. Fine against that. I'm a bit higher. I gave it an eight and a half. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I've i kind of seen what it can do, and it's kind of just annoying. And I, I think that there are some teams that will get heavily punished by uh, this core. I was going to say, I, was, I think I'm going to give it an eight just because having those three, like, you have to prep so specifically and i feel like it kind of limits you like your options against it just have, knowing that that's a thing you have to deal with yeah 
I think there's a chance that you see some transactions on our half of the of the tournament uh, just because they're going to think, oh, I have to play this team this week. What do I have for it? And realize they don't really have much. Or something that's just out there is going to be better. Yeah, maybe. I just think they need to get, like, electric, ground, and uh, psychic, resist. Like, get a grass type. That solves two of the three issues. And then fairy. Yeah. Imagine but, yeah. if Zerud was still there. Yeah. If Zerud was there, that's a perfect plug-in play. Oh, yeah. Gives them... Yeah, you know. that's a good point. Anyway. Uh, did you... Oh, yeah, you said eight. So, eight and a half, eight, and seven. All right. Moving on to Mr. Cole's draft. Uh, do you want to start, Greg? Sure, I'll go ahead and start. Um, so I like the Zero Aura pick. You have one of the fastest Pokemon in the draft, so you're kind of just guaranteed to go first. Yeah, um, that's... I also liked Noivern with Infiltrator. I think you can do some fun stuff there. And uh, I really enjoyed using Defensive Arcanine last season. Uh, it was about a year and a half ago at this point, maybe. Uh, but I found it to be very useful. Uh, and then you took Tapu Fini from me. I know that would have clashed and I would have had two terrain setters, but I, I do think it's a very good pick. Yeah, I, I think I got really lucky in the fact that I got um, Zero Aura and then Celesteela came back to me. Yeah, so um, I was actually yeah. like very torn between drafting Celesteela round one um, instead of Torn T. So Celesteela is an insane round two pick. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And same with Greg, where Celesteel and Tapu Fini both weak to electric, um, but obviously like Zero or and Crocodile. Um, and now Roserade um, kind of. Yeah, you're, you're okay. Yeah. Um, I, I really like this team. Uh, you know, the speed's really good, priority's fine. Um, I, maybe my main concern is it's lacking a little bit of wall breaking and just power in general. Yeah, um, I yeah. I think a lot of it is going to be setting up um, or like Moxie Crocodile, but I don't have anything that really just hits off the get-go. Yeah, you, yeah, you but... need like another wall breaker. Because like yeah, Zeror and Noivern are pretty um, like not powerful at all. Yeah. More pivots and speedy things. And like Celesteela right. Crook can like sweep a little bit, but yeah, you need you need a wall breaker. Rosary it like helps maybe just a little bit with that, but you need something else. Uh you also I think you're actually kinda of decent defensively too. I know you have Celesteela, but you also have uh play for two intimidate Pokemon with Arcanine and Crook. Yeah, I I I kinda of plan that out. Yeah, um, you are you're I, I really like they, that, yeah. they they can go defensive I I just kinda of went with trying to get something as versatile as, as I can. Yeah. And uh, those can both kind of play both roles, which is good. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I like your defense. You've got a lot of defensive options, which is good. You've got the Steela, Finny, Crook, Arcanine. Um, you could use maybe a little bit more special defense. Well, you got Licky Licky. Yeah, you're fine. Even Togetic. Yeah, you, your yeah, defense Togetic's is really strong. Totally yeah. Um, and your your hazards are great. Rosa... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say I think Rosa Raid's also got like a really good special defense stat, if I'm not mistaken. Like maybe like one ten. That's true. 90. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. No, and you're for... fine. You got a lot of defensive options, which is really nice. Like your defense vers versatility is is very, uh, very uh, nice. Just something to note on the graphic, it still shows Nihelgo, but uh, you are shopping out for Rose Raid after week one right yeah i i think it like officially goes through on like what monday or tuesday um i also got yuxi um which i think i think one of my my main problems was i didn't i really have a like that's why i picked up uh Nail like goes for stealth rock i kind of right. forgot that the um whatever you call it the listen no um pokemon uh, get, get the thank you the like true I kind of forgot that they got still Rock, so you see kind of. He's also a psychic type, which I didn't have before, so. Yeah, you see, is a great pickup. Uh, gives you another pivot, piece. a good rocker. Um, yeah, and you got. Um, what other hazards do you have? Oh yeah, spikes on frost lass. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Rocks on the on the leap. Oh yeah, you got you got spikes and T spikes on Roserade too. 
So yeah, yeah. your hazards are pretty solid. Your removal is yeah. great. Um, yeah, I think it's a really solid draft. The defense is great. My only complaint is like it. You it the offense really isn't too threatening. Could have some. Yeah, power it's there. yeah, it's it's decent without being like crazy compared to especially compared to what we've seen so far there's some yeah. insane offenses in this in this league yeah like everyone like yeah usually people have like a dragapult or a volcarona or a specter or something you don't really have that right um yeah but i i like it overall still i gave it an eight out of ten this draft also uh was braden improved so that's really what i was Ooh. going for thanks i gave it a seven and a half mainly because i i it was a little lacking offensively. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Definitely Cole. have to stick to like setting up, I think, but we'll see. Cowie says Cole's team is very good. What'd you give your team? Thanks, Cowie. What did you not give it? Not uh, your team? uh I mean I, I think I think eight out of ten is, is fair. Okay. Alrighty, moving on to Crown's draft. Uh, do you want to start with this one, Cole? Yeah. Um. So, I think no. I guess he didn't didn't uh, snipe me. So, obviously, I, I haven't actually used my mail metal, so I don't know um, too much about. I know it has what like an insane attack, insane defense. Um, and I think mail metal Zapdos Swampert is a crazy good core to start off with. Yeah. This team actually is really bulky. Looking at it. Yeah, it is. His speed is actually like terrible, but his defense is amazing. Oh yeah, I guess it is pretty slow. Uh, it has all kind of cool. It has five hundred or five Pokemon at a hundred or above, which is more is than it? some teams can say. Yeah, Salazzle got... at one seventeen, Whimsicott at one sixteen. You have Zapdos, Salamence, and Tentacruel all at a hundred. Oh, I don't really count. Well, that's true. Count a hundred for me. It's like over a hundred is is fast, but yeah, it, it, I mean, also that's kind of bad, like having three things right at 100, and then your other two things are, like, right at 117. It's not... It's a little clustered for me. I say not not diverse, but solid. Like, it'll it'll be any s slow team, I guess. Yeah. It's middling speed, I would say. Also, I think his priority is non-existent. I don't think he has... I guess he has, like, Aqua Jet mm. and Swampert? Yeah, I think Slazzle gets, like, yeah, okay. Sucker Punch. Dr Dragon might get Sucker Punch, but... It's yeah, like, I think it's, it's not stab. So. Yeah, Pekka might get it as well. Being a dark type, part dark. Could be wrong though. I haven't used that Pokemon before. But yeah, his priority is pretty bad overall. Um, his hazards also aren't the best. And he's got T spikes and Tentacruel. Um, I don't think Mail Battle gets rocks, does it? So Jurtagod and Swampert both get stealth rocks. Right. Eh, you know his hazards aren't that bad. Dragon Swampert is is an okay rock duo, and then he's got oh, and he's got Pharaoh Seed too. Honestly, it's... yeah, I take that back. His his hazards are fine. Um, and his removal is really good too, so that's good. Plus, um, you can toxic things with Solazzle, with corrosion, so that's nice. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, his wall cores really really nice overall one thing though is he is lacking a bit of recovery he's got the zapdos and then i think that's it honestly like tentacruel doesn't get any recovery swamper no recovery mel uh, no it gets recovery. giga drain well okay that elements gets roost yeah yeah silence gets roost i suppose i think silence is gonna be big for him that's gonna be like his win con because he really yeah, doesn't I have much so offense like we talked about um yeah. I mean, yeah, his defense defense is still good overall. So I think it's kind of similar to my draft, honestly, where it's, like, re it's just really balanced with not having, like, a standout attacker. Like, the defense is obviously super strong. Mm -hmm. Kind of psychic weak. Only resist his memo, right? A port more Pico, obviously, but... Yeah, I'm not personally too, too high on this draft. Um, I think you kind of are forced. Like, you might have to just drag and dance elements and hope, you know, nothing can, you know, hits you with haze or something like that. 
Dragon Dance and Moxie or something. Just hope to sweep from that. Yeah, I think he sort of gets worn down. Um, and he doesn't really have... Like, he's got Mel Metal, that wall breaks. But even his wall breakers are pretty limited. He's got the Frost Mist. Like, he's got Sweepers, but he doesn't have wall breakers again. Like I was saying. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'd say both the offense. The offense is pretty lacking. Defense is, is fine, but could be better. Um, and, again, he doesn't have any priority either. So, I gave it a 5 out of 10. I'd give it a, a 6, just because it is it is pretty balanced. It doesn't really have any, like, real weaknesses, but... Yeah, I... I think it's a six. I initially, when I was rating it, I, I gave it a bit higher, but I think that's partially just because I think it. I think we're getting to some not great teams coming up. I think it was just an experience. Like it, it was just better. Hmm. All right, moving on to Pokey's draft. Um, I already just played Pokey, so the first hand experience of it. Um, his only speed really is Sandrill. He relies so heavily on Sandrill um, that it's 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 going to be very predictable, and I mean it's really his only speed option. But so, I mean, like Sark, Sock is a really good scarfer, um, and then like Haxorus can sweep late game. But but yeah, he doesn't he doesn't have great speed at all. Um, his also his priority is also pretty lackluster. What does he have? Really nothing. I don't really see anything that has. Priority, good priority. Maybe a mock punch. Got it. I don't even think sockets mock punch. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it does either. Yeah, I don't think it has any priority. So, speed. It, 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 yeah, I was gonna say uh, Rotom's also a pretty good scarfer. So he's got like scarfers, but yeah, his priority is pretty pretty bad. Um, or speed yeah. speed and priority is pretty bad. This is the only like actual weather team, right? Because you have Gigalith and Hippowdon with Sandstream. And then you kind of draft Corviknight for pretty high up there, Excadrill pretty high up there. So yeah. you're kind of just telegraphing what you want to do. So you're going to know at least two or three Pokemon every match, and they're all kind of weak to water ground, or at least just water. Yeah, he, he does have a water weakness, uh, definitely. Jarvis, it helps a lot, but it, yeah. it's still not great. Um, he could really There's use a grass type, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Like, I'm drop Gigalith for a grass because... type. You kind of know what's coming, and so you don't really have to think too hard about what to bring. You kind of say, okay, this is what's most likely coming from what his team does, and you, you know, you have a bit more flexibility once you know what's happening. I think there's a lot of pressure on Corviknight. Um, I feel like it... Because he, does he really have any, like, special defensive walls? He really doesn't. I mean, Corviknight's obviously going to be great oh, because geez. it gets... Uh... And Jellicent. Hi, he's got yeah, fine stuff. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I think I think Corviknight, Corviknight's okay. I think it can do can do a couple of different things. It's just kind of an underwhelming Pokemon, in my opinion. It was so much better if Dynamax is legal, but it's not. So you kind of lose your best set when it comes to just uh, you like Steel Spike into the like three times, or maybe you have like an uh, an Airstream and then you just body press afterwards. Yeah. Um, and the only Pokemon at level 100 speed is the Dene at 101. Yeah. And then, other than, you know. Yeah, Sandro. Yeah, the, the yeah the speed the speed's a problem for sure. Um, yeah, I think so. He only has Stealth Rocks as hazards, which isn't the best. Although he does have like great rockers, that's not a problem at all for him. Yeah. Um, removal is it... good, and he also just doesn't have any like rocks weaknesses either. So he's pretty good in that department. Does um does Gardevoir get teleport? Oh, it does, obviously. Yeah. So he, he's That's got cool. decent pivots. U turn, yeah. teleport, volt switch. Volt switch. Sockets U turn, I believe. Yeah. Does it? I nice. think so. Yeah. Socks actually cool such track. a good scarfer. I, I I had that one season. I really liked it. Sock doesn't get U turn, by the way. Doesn't. Yeah. I, okay. I thought I had. I have a list, and it's uh. Teleporting Gardevoir, U-turn on Corviknight, 
and Dedenne, and then Volt Switch on Dedenne and Rotom. Yeah. Yeah, he's still, he's still fine. It's not an awful. Yeah. Um, his offense is a little tilted to the physical side. Um, like yeah, Paxorus, Excadrill. He's got the Gardevoir and Rotom, but they're, they're a little underwhelming. Yeah, I think Gardevoir is really going to be the only one, because I think Rotom will probably be more of a pivot or support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you're running a similar set to what you run with Rotom Wash. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You fog, Volt Switch, Willow, and then coverage, so probably a Ghost Move and Shadow Ball or something like that. I will say, having played him, though, his, I mean, his setup's very threatening. The Sand Drill plus the Haxorus are just two super big threats that you need to be prepared for. And a lot of times teams are going to be checking both of those with a single Pokemon. So if you can like use one to wear the to break through that one Pokemon and then use the other to sweep, um, it can be very effective. Corviknight's actually a great pickup because that's one of the best walls to this team. Yeah. Fair. I mean, I think his defense is fine. Like, Joe's and Hapaldon, are I really like both of those. Yeah, um, Hapaldon is as well. really great. I, I guess they share a common grass weakness, but then you got Corviknight, which resists, so. And Haxorus. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, like, the, the speed is the big downfall with this draft. Only having Stoth Rocks. Um, yeah, I gave it a 6 out of 10. Give it a 5.5. It, for pretty much the same reason, I don't like the speed, and... Um, I also knocked it down a little bit for just being too predictable, most likely. I'm going to give it a 6.5, just because it is a sand team with the extra drill, so you, you know, that's always going to be pretty strong. Alrighty. Moving on to Mr. Squishy. Where was Squishy's draft? Um, I, I like his draft a lot. He's got really good power really good speed like his offense is just really nice overall um good synergy between everything like his speed tiers are spread out he's got often or he's got specially attacking things he's got physically attacking things um it's another team that's just like really like bulky all around mm -hmm. he's right. extremely bulky i mean i found a few more issues than you guys he doesn't really have much in terms of a pivot book it's U-turn on Torn T and Chansey with teleport. You know, Spot gets teleport, right? I don't believe it does. Really? That sucks because um, it has regenerator. Yeah, it does not get teleport. Chansey gets teleport, I think. Yeah, that's it. It's just U-turn and teleport on those two Pokemon. Um, and what else? Uh, you don't really have much hazard removal. You have Torn T. It's Thundee T, not Torn Yeah, the hazard the hazard Thundee removal T. was my biggest issue with this draft. Um, he also doesn't have a grounded poison, which makes it a lot worse. Like Weezing is Weezing his only hazard removal. I think does Volcano get defog? Well, well, I think it does. Well, Weezing can run um, its other ability. It can, it can be grounded, right? Oh, it does get defog. That's crazy. Yeah, you can neutralize and gas, which is fine. And yeah, you can ground it that way. Yeah. Okay, so Volcano gets Defog, Weezing gets Defog. I don't think it's a huge issue. Could definitely have better removal, though. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I like the wall core. Sorry. Go ahead. No, you're fine. Um, yeah, no, I mean, like, Chansey, Umbreon, super bulky things. Um, he's got the Weezing, which is really physically bulky, which helps round that out. Kofag is really physically bulky, too. Um... Even saying, Clefairy is, like, pretty viable. Clefairy, yeah. Yeah, Clefairy. Like, I kind of like Clefairy. I was really thinking about... I think it's a two-point mon, right? Like, I was hoping it'd be a one-point yeah. mon. I would have picked it up, maybe. Um, and then Reuniclus is really nice, too. Like, his his walls are just really nice. Um, and then, like, the I really like the offense, too. Triaki on Thundee T is a great offensive um, core. And then, like, Reuniclus is powerful. Chandelier, you can run Scarf and do a lot with. Um, yeah, but Champ's a little versatile. So yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, he's got a lot of good options here. Just good quality mods all around. Yeah, no real like common weaknesses. A little ground weak maybe, but he's got Weezing and Tor or Thundee T. Yeah. 
Priority's a little lacking. He's got, what, Quick Attack on Terrakion? I think that's about it. Machamp, uh, Mock Punch, I guess. Yeah. I would say offensively, it's not not too great. No, on my really? Notes, I made a mistake. You don't like his offense? I mean, I, I, think, it, I think it's okay, but... Again, I don't think that... I mean... Terrakion and Thunder are like threats. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, and then like Reuniclus, it's hard, man. That thing is so good. I love Reuniclus. Um, Volcanion hits hard. Chandler hits hard. I guess his offense is a little bit biased to the special side. He's got a champ to balance that just a little bit. The only other complaint I'd have about his offense is he doesn't really have something super fast. What, Terrakion is his top at 108? Mm -hmm. Yep, and then 101 for a Thundee T. Yeah, so he, he definitely could have more yeah. speed. But he has good Scarfers, which helps that a little bit. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, I guess his only good Scarfers is Chandelier. Which Chandelier, isn't yeah. that great of a, sh a Scarfer, really. So, yeah, that's a big bit of an issue. But I, I really like his draft overall. Um, I give it 8 out of, eight out of 10. I think it's about a 7. I'm still kind of not sold. I, I I think offense is a bit underwhelming, and really, uh, yeah, I'm I'm just not a fan. I love the Umbreon. Yeah, I, I'm with Greg. I don't, I don't know what it is, but man, the Umbreon and he's got great clerics with Umbreon and Chansey. Well, here's the I thing, know. right? Chansey and Clefairy, they're both knockoff weak because you probably want to run Eviolite on both of those and kind of just knock it off, and they're not as effective. And if you have a fighting type, then that's Umbreon and Chansey that are threatened by them, and you can't really have it in there, so you have to, you know, yeah. switch into Reuniclus or Clefairy. I, I can see the knockoff definitely being a little bit of an issue with the Reuniclus, too, and uh, Kofag, maybe. I say Dark Fighting. Um, so it's Crafty this here. Team. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I can see that a little bit. I was going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Okay. Uh, moving on then to Ellie and William's draft. <laughs> Who wants to start? Uh, uh, go for it, then. Well, um, I will say they have some really cool Pokemon. They you do know, have Pikachu, cool Pokemon. Iconic. Ditto. Gonna be fun. Um, yeah. We'll go with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll I'll give an actual analytical point and say uh, they don't really have a good fairy type. Um, that's that's her problem. They have Sylveon, Jigglypuff which is okay. Chironic. Oh no, they're getting um. What they're are they getting? getting? Sylveon, Sylveon, right? Yeah, yeah, Sylveon. Right. So that but no, they're, I don't they're fine. Have to deal with that this week. Uh, yeah. Well, week one. They're they're um, getting Sylveon. I will say though, they're dropping Latios to get Sylveon, and I think it's a very bad idea. Latios is like their only speed. I mean, they have Keldeo too, but. They really, goes, really lack speed, and they need Latios for speed. It's 110, 108, 100, and then it drops to 95. Yeah. So, they, they, uh, need, they, need some, they need some fast things. So I, I think they're kind of going to rely on Sylvalia a little too much with its RKS system to kind of just have a typing they need that week. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, their, their type synergy is not good. Um, no. I mean, they're very, very electric weak. They need a ground type. I didn't even see that. Yeah. I just kind of looked and was like, oh, okay. Yeah, electric's a problem for them. <laughs> they, I yep. just didn't know where to start. Like, especially if they drop Latios again. They have no no electric. Or what, they have Pikachu as their only electric resist? Uh, immunity. Lightning Rod. Oh, immunity. There you go. There you go. What's, um... That means taking Pikachu each week. Yeah. Which they they could. They could. It is most certainly a decision you can make. <laughs> yeah, no, say, especially uh, dropping Shenotic, which is like actually an electric switch. And they're dropping Shenotic. It, it is. I I don't like Shenotic. I mean, it's bad. It's two point. It's bad. Now. It's two point. But yeah. But yeah, no, they uh, have. I mean, they don't even really have any special bulk besides like Tyranitar. Uh, well, well, I guess it's yeah. Sylveon. They also they have a Ditto. They have a ditto. They have a they round have a one ditto. ditto that, <laughs> oh my goodness, that was something. That was the funniest pick of the draft. Maybe. <laughs> um, I will say 
their speed is bad. Their priority is good, though. Um, Bullet punch, stuff like that. Also, removing Latios really Extreme hurts speed. their... Removing Latios really hurts their uh, their removal situation. Yeah, so... They got so volley. Yeah, so Got looking it. at that, I would immediately drop my initial ranking by a couple points. Because I'm not too, too... I was not as low as I could have been on them. Uh, but they don't really have a defogger. I'll say that. You've got Dragonite and Silvali. And that's it. Um, and then you've got Rocks on Tyranitar and Jigglypuff. And that's it. Yeah. So. The other thing I wanted to say on this draft is just like, I don't know, all the Pokemon do really similar things to me. Like, they're all kind of like bulky, kind of like wall breaking setup kind of things. See, Dragonite and T Tor Charizard all Dragon Dance. Yeah. I mean, as like they, not great as it is, I don't hate it. Like, they don't have any because walls. I, Where's their defense? They've got like uh, T-Tar. Yeah. yeah, it's non-existent. Like but... they just have, they just send out like an offensive Pokemon. They just like send out an offensive Pokemon. It like tries to set up, it dies. They send out another I offensive mean, Pokemon. I think if you just you hope that you switch in favorably and you tailwind with, I guess, well, you don't have Lottie anymore with like Charizard or Silvali, and or Dragonite or something, and you just hope to hit harder. And you kind of just hope you take them out before they take you out. And you get, like, 1-0 victories every week. I think that's kind of what you're hoping for here. Yeah. Did you have something to say, Cole? No. no. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not high on this job. I think with Latios, it may be like, be like a 3. I think dropping Latios is pretty bad. I'm going to bump it down to a 1. A 1? A 1. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, I mean, fix the electric weakness. Maybe I'll give you. Maybe I'll give you a three or a four. Listen, I I gave them I gave them a four or I gave them a five, knowing they're gonna drop Lottie. I'm giving them a four. Um, I'll be honest. Uh, it's it has potential. Let's just say if you make a couple changes, it has potential. So positivity. I'll get it with three because it's got some cool Pokemon. Exactly. Nice. Listen, you could have drafted Eevee and I would have bumped it up a little bit. Just saying. Okay, yeah. moving, moving on to Cat and Oz's draft. Um, I, I think the draft is solid. Their speed's not great, but it's not really a big deal because they're, they got Trick Room. Um, the... One of my biggest issues with the draft is something I didn't notice until uh, just a few minutes before the, this podcast is they really have like non-existent priority. I think I don't think Cinderace yeah. gets anything. Um, mm, sucker punch. They get sucker punch. Okay, that's it's not terrible, but I think it's maybe good on Cinderace. Cinderace gets like mock punch. But yeah, they they maybe. don't have any they don't have any priority really. Um, I will say though, uh, Amoongus is a pain. I think that's a really good Pokemon. Amoongus, Vaporeon are solid firewater grass of cinderace in there as well i think is actually really good mm -hmm. um big fan of the defensive pokemon on this team i think it's for what it's worth i think it's actually a pretty solid team i mean the the defense is is very very good um uh, yeah the, the the defense is I don't kind know. of insane the stack what if stack attack is i honestly don't know anything about it besides that it's steel and rock and it hits like it's defensive in um in trick room it's got like like sky high attack and defense, basically. Gotcha. And it, yeah, it hits really hard with like gyro ball. It's got like zero speed. Yeah. And you can beast boost defense, so you just keep going. You just keep getting tankier as you keep knocking things out. Gotcha. Is this so? Is this team just a trick trick room team? Do you think? I I think it has to be a trick room team. Um, except my issue is, your two trick room Pokemon or your two stealth rockers. Uh no, they yeah, got Porygon. And I got Chris. That's true. I mean, like, your, your two Trick Room, like, threats. Right? Like, you're gonna ideally want to... Oh, Colossal? And... Yeah, Colossal. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because um... Colossal is 
what base 30 speed and then stack as thir base 13. I think Colossus is gonna be more as like a suicide lead, like just hazard setter for them, which I think it does a fine job at. Um, right. Their hazards could definitely be better though. I I I would agree with you. I'm cautiously optimistic that their team do something. I kind of want to see some changes. I'm not sure what though. Um. I don't know where Crobat fits in, other than maybe Defog or something. I mean, Crobat gives them the speed they need, but... And it's also sure. kind of just like a good pivot. They they lack pivots. Yeah, that's true. It does help. Um, it can, like, revenge kill something, maybe. Um, and just... Yeah, I, I, I think Crobat's fine on this team. It's no, I, awkward I, I like Crobat. It's just awkward. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's kind of it's kind of tough, because it doesn't really fit a normal role that you'd see in a Pokemon. It's a good right, Pokemon. like if you were, I, I kind of wish they would almost lean into Trick Room even more. I think you kind of. I think, to. I think they need like, one Pokemon to be like. An actual threat in Trick Room. I mean, Stack Attack this, is like a threat a, in Trick Room. Out. Yeah. And they also do have the Cresselia, which is a big Calm Mind Sweep set uh, threat. Um, Although it's just, just I, I thought Cresselia would be slower, but it's at eighty-five. Holy cow, it's actually a lot faster than I thought it would be. Yeah. Yeah. And it, this, I, I this don't know, I... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, this, this team looks like it's just going to want to Toxic you, and then, like, stall you out with, with Toxic. Yeah. The Wish and Regenerator and all that stuff, the, yeah. yeah. The Togekiss is very nice, too, for wall breaking. I like that. Um... Yeah, that's true. And back to the trick room thing, I would I don't know if I really agree that they should lean more in the trick room. I, I like Cinderace. I think it's good to have at least one fast thing. Yeah, um, I think you you keep the Cinderace and maybe you find you swap something else out for something that's maybe comparable combat. for what it does. Yeah. Eh, okay, I can maybe see that. Um, the Rotom is is nice too for wall breaking, um, but they could I mean their wall breaking could be better. Um, yeah. Or or setup too. Like they could use another setup mon, especially considering they're they're using trick room. Like Crisali is their only setup, I think. I mean, I guess stack. Um, yeah. The team is. You had a few options, and I, I'm playing them this week, so I have prepped a bit for that. I've done a couple mocks. It's it's interesting. I was gonna say they do have like good removal, but the team is pretty weak to stealth rocks, especially the wall breakers. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think you are running. You might. I forget if you have to run heavy duty boots on Cinderace just because of the rocks is going to hurt, especially because you want to be able to just go out with U turn. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna be controlling hazards pretty well, I think. So yeah, they don't have to. You have options. Although they don't have any spinners, right? So. Uh, colossal. Oh, but it's colossal it gets, spin. I it's a, that. it spins except. Then you'll be faster, making yourself slower in trick room. So you kind of hurt yourself there. Hmm. So it's it exists. It's just I don't think it's very good. I don't know. I think I like Colossal for their team, but um, yeah. I don't like Colossal in general. I think it's better in doubles. And I, I where you can um reliably use uh, steam engine. Um, all right. I gave this a seven out of ten. Walkor is really good, um, like really, really good, and they have they have some threats. I think I'm gonna give it a six. Is good. I, I was actually gonna give it a five, just because I think with the offenses that we've seen already, I think that it the team just like can't sustain against it. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't hit as hard as a couple other teams. Uh, Alrighty. Last, last draft. Least, Static has been very least. patient waiting in Twitch chat for this. Um, and, uh, you know, this is where we have, we're sorry we all have to go. Uh, unfortunate. <laughs> sorry, Static. Yeah. It's nice knowing. Um, okay, so besides Pandy's draft, Static has really, really great wall breakers. Um, like, just he's got tons of threats on his team. Um, I agree. I would also like to say, does not have any Pokemon with a speed above 100. Yeah, his speed is the worst in the draft. Oh, wow. I think. That is slow. 
His, yeah. his speed is a concern, big concern, definitely. It's Hydreigon at 98, Mimikyu at 96, Top Man, Not at even something at 100, yeah. Mm -mm. And then Oof. it goes to Rotom Heat at 86, and then drops to Mamoswine at 80, and then Butterfree at 70. So. Yeah. And besides Ice Shard and Mamo, his priority really isn't there either. I guess Shadow Snake on Dewblade? Shadow Snake on Mimikyu? Eh. I. You know, Shard and Cloister? I don't know. It's not It's not great. It's it's fine, I guess. You know, weirdly enough, this actually, I think, could be a Trick Room team almost. Yeah. No, I, I think so. Well. Yeah, Trick Room, Lele. It's got a Trick Room, Grace Bronzong. And Bronzong. Ooh. So, I didn't even notice that, really. Um, About priority with Tapu Lele, because he gets Psychic Terrain. Yep. So, I believe that means that, what, this priority is not effective? Yeah, priority doesn't do anything. So, like, like the the moves just don't happen. Yeah, I mean, I so just look at priority so because the speed is so bad. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. So the blade I guess that is actually a steal for three points. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Oh, I, yeah, two blades really good. Um, I guess that actually like not having or having psychic train actually probably makes the speed problem worse, right? Because the priority he does have isn't even gonna be working. Something else I noticed is uh, he has a pretty big fire weakness on some of his bulkier Pokemon. Yeah, his fire weakness is bad. So, yeah. And I think a couple other teams that we've seen that on have at least, like, Flash Fire or something similar to be able to uh, mitigate that. Yeah, he could really use a better water type besides Cloyster that resists fire. Like, especially well, having a Ferrothorn in there. And it wrote him heat, like you, I don't know. Having having a more defensive water would be very good for this draft. And he has plenty of setup and threats and all that anyway. Um, he doesn't he need the had... offense from Cloyster. He has what, three resists, right? Is that wrote him heat, Lele, and Hydrogen? Or I guess Mimikyu. Well, yeah. Wait, Mimikyu's a fire does, resist? Does fairy, does fairy resist fire? No. No. It's neutral. Some... No. So he's got Hydrogen, wrote him heat, and that's it. And he's got, um, like, the big Ferrothorn weakness, which is, like, why you're running fire in the first place. Like, when you drop Ferrothorn, you need good fire resist, because you know people are going to be, um, I mean, fire. The, the good thing is, the good thing is there's no hidden power fire, so you kind of, yeah, you kind of know where the fire moves are going to come from. That's true. Um, it's just fairy is resistant to fire. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Yeah. Um... His 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 hazard options are pretty good, but he doesn't. His removal could be better. Um, he's it's got what defog hydrogon, hydrogon, and then rapid booster. Yeah, could be better. We have it. I guess Rotom Heat is his best defogger, which isn't isn't that bad with defogger, but I will on a more say defensive team. If he wants to run like light screen reflect, he has a lot of Pokemon that can do so. That's a good point. The only Pokemon that can't is Mamoswine. Hmm. Everything else gets Reflect, Light Screen, or both. Wow. That's actually kind of crazy. <laughs> if only screen think... stacked. Right. <laughs> oh, <goodness>. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. Uh, does it stack with Aurora Veil? That's the real question. I don't think so. I think... Oh! Ooh, that... no, I... That's actually so cool of a deal. Yeah. That, I, it, so... I think sure. it's one or the other. Yeah, it, it should be one or the other. I know Re uh, Reflect and Light Screen can stack, but I don't think Aurora Veil can because it's basically the effect of both. Right. If you could, Delibird's looking pretty good right about now. I think Bronzong's really important to this team. I agree. Oh, you can run Heat Proof on Bronzong, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, but it's still only... Uh... It's still neutral. Just yeah. takes away the resist, or it takes away the weakness. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. This draft is solid. Like, there's a lot of threats. There's a lot of offensive threats here. Um, the defensive core is, is pretty decent. Um, it's just like the speed is the big, big issue. Um, but with this setup, I think it helps a little bit. Like the Shell Smash Cloister, the I guess technically Butterfree setup. Um, I think you were more supportive on Butterfree, wouldn't you? Like, you oh, can Quiver really? Dance, but you're probably pressing Sleep Powder. Hmm. 
do double damage to blade with autonomized sword stance. Yeah. yeah. I give it a seven out of ten. I give it a six and a half. I give it a seven as well. It's just I think the speed is what's gonna kill it. Mm -hmm. But trick room would be really really cool to see it with a steam. Yeah, I didn't even That'd think about that. Although it doesn't really have anything like super slow besides like Ferrothorn. So it's fair nope. with 20, Bronze Long at 33, Dewblade at 35. And I then guess Magnum Dewblade can abuse a little bit. Yeah. But I, I think with the steam being all under 100, I think you could really easily at least outslow what you need to, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's true. Plus, you can always run min speed. Stuff like right. That. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, in it's interesting. You could entertain the thought against some of the faster teams. So something I think there was was it Kish's team that had I think he has six Pokemon that are all faster. You could do that. Yeah, on a team like that you wouldn't even have to Yeah, you don't you can just go zero IVs or whatever. Yep. Alrighty. I think we're done there. Anyone else have any other any other thoughts? Not much. It's a loud no. But Ben, we all know you're going to get a runner up again this year, aren't you? <laughs> I don't know. Cowie's team's pretty threatening, I will say. Yeah, he'll beat you in finals. He'll it's the Deli Bird. It's the <laughs> Deli Bird. I'm telling you. Uh, any Anything anyone else in the chat wants to say? Maybe something we missed about the draft, or not chat, like in the in the voice chat. Maybe. You ranked like three teams like way too low. Okay. Um, Those teams. Um, Greg's team, Crown's team, and Cole's team. Hmm. Those were like ranked really poorly. By by um, you better. Wait, you think? Okay, I give Cole. They should eight. have been higher. Should Cole's better than eight? And then he ranked uh, Kish's team too high. Really? Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I really like Weevil, I guess. Okay, really? I had no my, idea. My rankings were perfect. Um. Oh, I, I don't. I I ranked. Uh... I ranked according to what you said earlier. Well, if, if you did do what I said, then you're right. But right. you don't have them written down a place where I can see them, so I don't know. All right. If there's nothing else, I'm going to go ahead and stop the podcast there. Thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs>